Hello goons and gals, I come to you today with a heightened sense of enthusiasm for I believe I have found a viable solution to fix the Honda CRF 450L and RL models jerky throttle response without having to spend $800 on an ECU unit. That's pretty good, huh? So if you remember my recent first impressions video, I was definitely one of those complainers about this ECU unit. I said it was almost impossible to ride effectively and enthusiastically with its current stock form. However, I have found a solution by a combination of three things I want to share with you today. Now, maybe you've heard these out here on the internet. I didn't find anything with these three combinations. So if somebody out there's already done it, hey, Congrats to you for finding it, but I just found something that really improves the quality and the ride of this motorcycle. So that's my job, man, is to share this with you because it's something that we can all do. Now, one of these things is universal. And I am going to say that this is the top mod that you should make the first day you buy this. Like the moment you ride off a lot with this or you buy this bike, some of you probably have already done it and will know about this, but it's definitely something that you should do and it's far less than $800, it's very economical. Now the other two things I found in combination with that is what we really wanna talk about today because this is dependent on your geographical location and the temperature and the places in which you ride, which I'll go into detail a little bit about that. But putting these things together, has made a tremendous difference because in that first impressions video, I said, I don't think I can ride this bike without the ECU. I'm gonna retract that statement because with what I've done, it is not perfect by any means and probably an ECU unit, if you have the 800, is, is definitely gonna be a better way to go. But I think with these three things, you can do them cheaply and you'll make an amazing difference in this bike. So let me shut my mouth and let's get down to it. So let's begin with step number one, and I'm gonna say that a lot of you have already done this because this part has been documented before. It's more important about steps two and three that we'll talk about in just a second. But I wanted to go over with this just in case there's any newbies to this motorcycle out there or those that haven't done it or are on the fence about doing what I'm about to explain. I'm gonna say that if I can retract any statement in any video I've done about this bike, this is the single greatest mod so far that everybody who buys this bike has to put this on. That's how I feel about it and I'm gonna tell you why. So let's first talk about this problem just in case you don't quite understand the CRF 450 RL. If you do already, I apologize. I'll make it as brief as possible. Because this bike is a detuned 450 motor, it has a special ECU that allows it to pass emissions in 50 states. Now when you're at regular throttle, the bike is just fine. Now you can put a pipe and all kinds of other mods on it and make it go faster, but for all intents and purposes, it's fueling is just fine. The problem is when you let off of the throttle or you chop the throttle, the ECU is programmed to cut spark and fuel to the engine. This is where you get that abrupt feeling of the bike stopping on you. Now on the freeway, it doesn't quite feel as aggressive as it would on trail. So on a freeway, you let off of the throttle. It almost sounds like the bike isn't running at all. When you're on a trail or you're on rough terrain, it's going to be more exacerbated. You're going to feel more of a jerk. So that choppy throttle response is something that we're not going to be able to get rid of 100%, but this solution right here definitely improves it. Now the problem with the bike more than the, that is that when you get back onto the throttle, the ECU instantly impulses spark and fuel to the engine, giving it that abrupt throttle response. Now up to this date, there are different types of ECU units out there, and if we can spend a second on that, only the Vortex that we found so far is the one that delivers constant spark and constant fuel to the engine. Like the Dynojet does not, the JD Tuning does not, as far as I know. So that's what makes that one much special, more special, plus there's other mods that you can do. But we're not going to do that. What you should do, which many of you already know, is get this G2 Throttle Tamer. The way the cam is built on this... What it will do is it doesn't completely eliminate that abrupt chop of the throttle. You're still going to have a little bit in there. It does improve it, but I'm going to say it gives it about a 20 to a 30% improvement. The big improvement is when you roll back onto your throttle, the way this cam is designed, it really tapers out the power of the bike and gives it a really nice, smooth entry. But when you get to about half throttle to full throttle, 
it's the same as stock. It's just that initial hit right here, that initial turn of your throttle, it does an amazing job with this bike. Now maybe it works different on other models, but this one, game changer. It, it just, I would say 20% on the chop when you let off, but it probably reduces that jerkiness to me by about 70 to 80% just by putting that on. If you don't do anything else that I talk about, just by putting that thing on, you gotta do it, man. And I'm, I'm not the first one to say this. This is not revolutionary what I just came up with. There's, I found it from YouTube videos as well, but there's some other things that I wanna talk about with that. Now, I'm gonna give you something else on top of that that made a little bit of difference for me. Depending on how good you are with your throttle control, you know, not all of us are top tier professional riders, right? I went with a little bit loose slack here in the throttle. Just a little bit loose because when you're off road, you're bouncing around a lot. It's not uncommon that your hand might shake a little bit and the more that you ride, the more tired you become and your throttle control gets sloppier. I normally have a really, really tight throttle, but by putting this on here, which is a 10 minute job, by the way, you just pull, pull it off the, the stock, throw this one back on and you're, you're on the road in minutes and it costs like 70 to 80 bucks depending on where you buy it. But a little tip on there, what helped me may not help you is I put a little tiny bit of slack into the throttle cables here. So I just have a little, little bit of movement here. So if I'm going like really, really slow technical terrain, then my hand won't jerk around, especially when I'm getting tired. So that's step number one. I wanna to move to step number two. So let's move to steps two and three. And remember, these are going to be geographically and weather dependent. Where I tested this bike was in Las Vegas, Nevada, and the temperatures were about 18 Celsius, which is between 60 and 65 Fahrenheit. And I tested this bike at both 2,500 feet elevation and less as well as 4,000 to 4,500, and I got some different settings, so I'm gonna give you both of those. If you are 2,500 feet or lower in elevation, I would recommend not doing step number two, which is removing this airbox lid. If you move to higher elevations, which is roughly about 2,800 to 3,000 plus, I found this bike to be an absolute demon without the airbox cover. So if you're living in a higher elevation, I would recommend removing this. Now this is just my experience. You're gonna have to take this off and ride it with it and without it and put it on and off. It doesn't take long to do that to get a good feel for it. I can only give you what worked for me. You may not like it. And this is with a stock pipe. So if you have a performance pipe, performance header, you have the Vortex ECU or another ECU, you could have a different result. I'm talking about a bone stock bike, and that's also a bone stock air filter. So maybe if you have a twin air filter or a Canyon or a high performance filter, it may have a different result. I'm just talking about the stock. So this is something you're gonna have to experience or experiment, I should say, a little bit more on your own. But here's what I found. 2,500 feet, warmer temperatures, leave it on. Colder temperatures, higher elevation, take it off. That's where the bike worked most. It's a two to three minute job you'll have to experience, but I found with this combined with the throttle was good. So the last and final step is down here on the left side of the motorcycle is the idle. Now this was a suggestion from many of you guys, the viewers who recommended that I give this a shot and that is adding a little bit more idle to this bike. Now this is something again, it's geographically and weather dependent and it's also dependent on what you do with your air box. But I would make a suggestion here that you want a little bit more idle than stock. I went two clicks, I don't know what the exact number is on that, two clicks from stock by turning it counterclockwise here, two clicks from stock, and that gave me the perfect combination and that's without the air box. When I put the air box back on, I went back to one. That's just what was working for me. So you're gonna have to adjust that but this made a big difference as well, especially for technical terrain and other stuff like that. It kept the bike more, less likely, I should say, of flame out and stalling. So you're gonna have to just take off your air box, adjust this, but a good setting is just till you get a little height, just a little bit higher than the stock rev, 
You just want a little bit more of that and write it. If you need a little bit more, add it and go back and forth and just test it. It'll take maybe a half an hour, 45 minutes, but just go out and write a little bit and find out what's comfortable for you for that combination at work. Now, something else I want to throw in there real quick on that is the clutch pull. Now, this clutch pull was kind of sloppy for me, which means while the bike was idling or when you had it in gear, you would push in the clutch and, and the bike wouldn't roll forward. Or when you would start it, it would want to jump a little bit. And then when you held in the clutch with the higher idle, the bike just kept on moving. I don't want that for technical terrain. I don't want my bike coasting at five miles an hour or, or however fast it goes. I don't know if this is something that's rider preference. You'll have to make the, the decision. But in addition to that, when you have more idle is add more clutch in there. So when you pull it in, the bike does not move at all. Now, maybe you like that. So you can just have like a cruise control at five miles an hour down a fire road. I don't know. But for me, that's what worked better. Now, one last thing I want to make a mention here as we go around the front. I forgot this in the beginning of the video is there has been talk about this throttle sticking. I'm not experiencing that on the 2022 model. And what it is, is when you turn it to the right, like this, there are videos out there where the throttle's not snapping backwards. It's coming back real, real slow. Now, all the videos I've seen where that's been a problem, that's been like a 2019, 2020 model, this is 2022, so all I would suggest of this, one little, let's say a fourth step. If you have that lock here where it is dragging, I don't think you're gonna have that problem with this throttle, but if you do, you're gonna to have to probably replace the cables and go with the CR shorter cables or something like that. I just wanted to mention it real quick. So the steps are, first and foremost, if you do nothing else to the bike, get the G2 throttle tamer. It's a game changer for this motorcycle. I couldn't be any more happier with the way that it is and the way that the bike worked. Step two is your air box. Take it on, take it off. Uh, if you have a performance filter, you may get a different result, but experiment with it. I had much better results at lower elevation without it. And then go ahead and adjust to the choke here or the idle to your liking. So the thing is just to really be patient. I'm sure somebody has put a video like this together before. I'm not revolutionary in any way. It was just something that I work with the bike. But here's what I wanted to share. It made enough difference. Of course, the Vortex ECU is gonna be a lot better. You know, probably any ECU unit is gonna be a lot better. But we're talking about a lot of money too. So if you don't have that money and you don't wanna spend it right now, I think this is good enough where you could be very happy with riding this bike without it. To me, I'm like, well, I already bought the Vortex ECU. It's just on back I'm like, well, I could have waited now, but I did what I did anyway. I just wanted to let you guys know that. So if you're in a pinch for some money, you don't want to add it right away, or you're thinking about buying this bike and you're saying, and I really don't want to put that in there. Plus the pipe. I think you, you got a really good motorcycle with just doing this, getting this t throttle tamer completely stock right now. It's not the greatest motorcycle in the world like this, but it is a night and day difference and it's a much better experience and it's a bike that's a lot of fun to ride and that's why I'm recommending it. So goons and gals, that's it for today. I wanna to thank you very much for your support and watching this video. If you have anything that you'd like to add or something that I left out, then go ahead and put it down there in the description box. We'd love to hear about your CRF 450RL stories or any other kind of stories you wish to share. And as always, I say, Whatever I shared in this video is just my opinion, my opinion only, and I could be wrong. Thanks for watching.